Hello, everyone. Welcome to my podcast here at Rapper University. I hope you stick around today, as in this production, I tackled one major question. How do sports help build relationships within ourselves or specifically Radford University students? This is a topic that is very interesting to me as I am an avid sports fan of several leagues and I tend to relate to some of my friends more than others purely because of their knowledge of sports. For example, my current roommate is actually a former baseball teammate of mine in high school and it was on the baseball field that we really saw our friendship come together. Being a former athlete, I know what being teammates with someone can bring, but I've also experienced it from the fans' perspective. To answer this fascinating question, I decided to reach out to three individuals, Dr. Jed Blanton at the University of Tennessee, Miss Emily Cleef at the University of Michigan, and Mr. Trevor Tidwell, a student here at Radford. Dr. Blanton is a sports psychology and kinesiology professor at the University of Tennessee, and I wanted to see his thoughts on how people perceive each other through the eyes of their sports teams. Here are some excerpts from the conversation that I had with Dr. Blanton over Zoom. Okay, so my area of sports psychology is in uh, youth sport and particularly adolescent development and the high school sport experience. Uh, I did my graduate training at the Institute for the Study of Youth Sports at Michigan State University with Dr. Dan Gould, preeminent scholar in coaching science and uh, youth sport. And while I was there, I really focused on leadership training and leadership development, particularly like the high school captain. And we ran a series of workshops around the state. So the four years that I was there, we we updated and evolved the curriculum as needed and as science and findings, you know, increased our knowledge around what captains were dealing with and how to develop leadership. And through that relationship with the uh, Michigan High School Athletic Association, I got involved with their Student Advisory Council. And so the MHSA, as does um, a small number, less probably less than half of the state associations, but, but certainly more than one, they have student advisory councils. And so they bring kids from around the state to serve as a sounding board for the athletic association. So I was invited to work with them for the last couple of years I was there. I ended up writing my dissertation on their program and, and got to be involved with a lot of the things that they did. The main thing that I wanted to explore with this interview was how fans build relationships at sporting events and how crowds are frequently able to build connections like finding their best friends and significant others at these such events. Okay, I have a, a few different theories and um, on this, so stop me if I'm going too far down any rabbit holes. Uh, the first one is, is a really basic thing that a buddy of mine actually pointed out to me last year, and he's not an academic, but he said the, the two things that are most likely to bring people together are sweating and eating. Uh, and so, you know, you think about all our major holidays or all these special social events in our lives, and it, there's usually food involved. Um, a big meal, cake, something. Um, and the other thing would be sport and exercise. And so, you know, if we look back uh, throughout history, whenever a society has developed uh, some economic advantages, uh, we tend to see an increase in leisure time pursuits. And I'm going way, way back to, you know, the... Um, agrarian cultures the the first time hunter gatherers sort of started planting food and staying you know once they got their villages up and running there was leisure time and we have evidence of, of sport and games so there, there's something maybe within the human um you know animal species that sort of enjoys play um the other thing that maybe relationships form uh to two particular theories here from psychology one is is motivational and we all have this innate desire to uh, belong to a group of people. And so when you're in a, a structured environment like sport, where there is really limited autonomy, you know, there's one thing happening, there's one thing watching, everybody kind of uh, subconsciously agrees to follow a certain uh, protocol or set of norms. You know, when you sort of reduce the, the noise and the options to just a few, we can then focus on the relationships uh, that happen. Parallel to that sort of motivational thing, that sort of drive to belong, we also have a drive to separate for distinction. And so we often fall into um, 
an us versus them mentality in almost every setting and sport really heightens that the opponents uh the team you're rooting for uh your team you know we, we often talk about when a team wins that my team won even though you don't even know the players they don't even know you were there it's your team and and some interesting uh, developments in evolutionary psychology and relatively recent is this sort of uh, notion of the implicit bias and we we judge others by if they are one of us or, or one of them we're sort of constantly making this decision Another thing that I wanted to touch on was a competition that Dr. Blanton discussed with me called the Battle of the Fans and how high school students in Michigan become closer because of it. The, the process to apply is sort of a driving mechanism and that uh, schools see these, these other schools having a ball and they, they want to be a part of that. And what's really interesting about this competition is it's, um, there's a lot more to it than just the just a, a video highlight reel of you know a bunch of 16 year olds doing crazy things in the stands they have to write an application uh, they have to have an organized student section so there has to be a small leadership group that is completely student run that communicates game times that really is well organized and the the state association really encourages a lack of adult authority <laughs> So the, these kids really have to be autonomous and that's what makes it really special. And so what's, you know, to bring us back to sort of adolescent development, the thing that we've seen is while adults play a big role in adolescent development, it's when adults kind of take a step to the sidelines and let that emerging adult make some decisions, mm -hmm. uh, when the ad adults support ideas and initiative, uh, so they provide scaffolding or they provide the path, but they don't lead the way, then we, we tend to see a lot more positive asset uh, development or positive gains in, in some of these psychological assets. So they have, to, they have to have a great student section. It has to be student-led. It has to be really positive. And what the MHSAA does, and I don't, I don't know how well it's articulated on the link, but the school that wins, they get a state banner just like any other school school in any other sport to hang in their gym and it's really cool to see that they are the state champions uh, in this battle of the fans um, but it's the stories underneath that really make it special and really where you see the the development and where you see the bonds within especially the leadership group uh, but even amongst their friends you know where like, okay we don't tolerate this negative behavior this is what we're about so you got young people thinking about um, their personal image, their, you know, for lack of better words, brand representation, uh, um, supporting friends, um, you know, not demeaning referees and opponents, like trying to just trying to have fun, which that's why kids play sport in the first place. The goal of the competition seems to be high school students coming together to form a great student section, even going as far as getting their own state championship banner that hangs in the rafters. When thinking about sports crowds, things like the Cameron Crazies at Duke University or some of the other fantastic sections in college sports seem impossible without connection in the students or fans. Now to flip things around, I wanted to expand on the idea of the us versus them mentality and get Dr. Blanton's thought on that approach in rivalries. No, I think you're spot on. I think it's that, that us versus them mentality and then what um causes the, the the more pleasant or negative interactions is the the degree to which we've um embodied that as a part of our identity um so like i went to michigan state university and we have a big rivalry with the university of michigan but but the the more we internalize it and and so some people really embody that they internalize it it becomes a part of their identity and whenever uh, Michigan does something better than Michigan State. They they take it personally, which is really irrational when you think about it. The the more negative it is, and so I I would actually characterize that as somebody who's probably struggling with their identity a little bit, their security. The same thing happens, you know, with our our sexuality, our race. The more insecure we are, the, the more aggressive we tend to be with protecting what whatever that image is that we want to portray. But if we're insecure, that we're not portraying it enough the interesting thing about rivalries if we bring it back to, to sport a little bit is there's some research in the 80s 
um, on aggression. And what they showed is that uh, the more aggressive the players were, so like in rivalry games when things get a little bit more chippy, they tended to see more aggressive actions in the stadiums and the fans themselves. Mm -hmm. And so that that's again that internalization when, which is again really irrational if you think about uh, going to the Swamp or Nayland Stadium when there's you know we I don't know what Florida sits, but we we have over a hundred thousand seats. Mm -hmm. And so for me to think that I'm special enough that when two 19 year old kids who can't see me, who don't know that I'm there, I'm a face out of a hundred thousand get angry with each other. I internalize it and then get angry at the person sitting next to me because the animal on their hat is different than mine. That was Dr. Jed Blanton from the University of Tennessee. As we learned about the fans' mind when dealing with other sports fans, both friendly and hostile, mostly in high school student bodies. Now that we have a general idea of a fan's thought process, let's dive into the mind of a college student with the same subject. Miss Emily Cleef is an athletic counselor for student athletes at the University of Michigan and a former athlete herself. So my name is Emily Cleef and I'm originally from Kentucky. I went to school at the University of Michigan. I was a former athlete. I swam. I was a distance swimmer and swam 544 and I had a mile and won NCAAs in the mile in 2008. Went on to swim professionally for six years for the United States after I graduated from college. During that time, I went back to school and got my master's in social work at Michigan and was placed in the athletic department to work with student athletes on mental health and sport performance. So I see student athletes across the entire continuum in all sports. And that's currently what I do now. I'm full-time employed at the University of Michigan as a licensed athletic counselor, working with student athletes on that full spectrum of care. And I have a lot of experience in the athletic realm, having been a former athlete, a former professional athlete, and being raised around athletics my whole life. Miss Cleef is clearly well-versed in the sports realm, and I wanted to start by asking her how fans relate to other fans that support the same team compared to fans who support another team. Well, I think there's multiple different factors in that. Number one, that like threatening aspect of it. We talk about rivalries, and if for at least when I look at sports, and even when I was an athlete, if I saw somebody from Ohio State or Indiana in a swimming realm, like those two were our rivals. And so I would automatically have this built up in my mind that they're enemies. And honestly, if I saw somebody from Minnesota, I would talk to them and it would not be a problem at all. So I think we also develop this, this idea of other schools and other sports teams as, okay, this one's good, this one's bad. I can be friends with this one. I can't be friends with this one. Michigan and Ohio State, Alabama and Auburn, Duke and North Carolina, all classic rivalries in the college sports world. For Radford, the same can be said for schools like UNC Asheville or Winthrop, Big South opponents. Fans can allow their judgment to be clouded by their allegiances in these matchups as they transcend into their everyday lives. Absolutely. Well, it's that idea of collectiveness. It's the idea of belonging to a group. And when we all have a similar idea, or if we all have a similar enemy or anything like that, then I'm belonging. I'm like involved mm -hmm. with, a, with a group of people, and we all have a similar message. We all have a similar feeling towards things and not that I want to get into politics or anything like that but it's the same thing we all have our belief systems and that's the same thing that's true with fans and sports and teams we identify with certain things that hold true to our values and, and what we believe and that's what drives that that I connect with you because you went to the University of Michigan I don't connect with you because you went to Ohio State or I connect with you because you went to Michigan and we both hate Ohio State so there's that piece there Next, we discuss the us versus them mentality that I had discussed with Dr. Blanton from before, talking about how places like the Big House at Michigan or Cameron Indoor Stadium at Duke can create a great environment for fans to relate with each other. And that's part of, that's what fans enjoy, right? Like, mm -hmm. a lot of times fans feel like they have a role within the, the performance itself, which inherently they do. Like, if you mm -hmm. ever go to a game where there's not a lot of fans there, it can potentially impact the play. If you go to an event where there's a ton of people there, it impacts the play. The last question that I had for Miss Cleef was about students who were struggling to build relationships going to games and if she thought that it would be a good idea for them to do so. 
I think that it can definitely help with feeling included and, and if people feel isolated or if they don't feel like they're connecting with other people, finding that idea of camaraderie and finding that collectiveness can be really helpful to even just bring them out of their shell enough to go and, and talk to other people across campus. You get into an environment where, say, it's basketball and somebody just dunks the ball and everybody's turning around and high five and smile and laugh and, and, and really excited. That's going to naturally enhance that that individual's inclusive feeling with, okay, I belong here because they're acknowledging me. Now I can go into the my life away from this one event and maybe take some of those things and maybe reach out a little bit more and not have to feel so isolated. And that might be that initial element or that initial experience that helps kind of pull somebody out and find that connecting, connecting piece that they're looking for. I think sports have an amazing ability to draw people together and have an amazing ability to increase excitement and joy in, in everything in people's lives. Miss Emily Cleef explaining how college students and fans of certain colleges see each other and explaining how sports can be beneficial in creating strong relationships. We focused a lot on the general idea of building connections, but what about Radford University students specifically? I've got you covered as I brought in Radford's own Trevor Tidwell, a senior in the physics department and a member of the pep band here at RU. Specifically with the pep band, the, most of the people who come, they're either music majors or music minders, or basically anyone who plays an instrument and wants to uh, cheer on our, our basketball team. And a lot of the people who like are freshmen and they decide to join, or if they are a non-major, mo- I don't know most of the non-majors in the band once they join, it's a lot of fun just getting to know them there at the game. It brings us together just physically at the game itself. And then during the game, we like to heckle the other team and stuff like that. And I feel like overall that really does bring uh, multiple people, especially in the band, together. I wanted to get Trevor's thoughts of the us versus them mentality as well, considering he had seen it often firsthand at many basketball games. Yeah, it's like that mindset that you said that we are one. Uh, like even whenever I'm talking about the uh, the basketball team, I'm like, oh yeah, I don't say our guys did this. We shot a buzzer beater, all that stuff. I say we. It really feels like it. It brings all of us together. And even though I'm not on the basketball team, it's still a we, as in we are all one. I know that I see. I tend to relate to people who do know a lot about sports, as I am an avid sportsman myself. So being able to go and discuss certain things about the game in front of me, whether it be baseball, basketball, football, whatever it may be, being able to do that as a starting point for a conversation, I know that once I have that conversation with them, if I see them on campus later, I'm more likely to interact with them. I'm more likely to say something to them, obviously become and build, start to build a relationship. And my thought process is if you're going into this university or maybe if you've even been to this university for a decent amount of time, but you just haven't been able to find that groove or find a certain, or having trouble connecting with other people, you have to go to the basketball games, but not only go to the basketball games, you have to get passionate in a way. You have to be able to embrace, in this example, the Highlander in you. So being able to go to the basketball games and support Radford, you're going to get more people to rally around you and to connect with if you support Radford instead of just, ah, well, I'm just going to be here and sit around. Like You still have to get into it. But at the same time, like you said earlier, I believe that going to these basketball games and going to baseball games, things like that, you're able to find that rallying thing to be able to connect and say, hey, I have that in common with that other person in the band we have people like that there's some people who don't know a whole lot about basketball and stuff like that but even though that they can't quite get into the game like I do like with how the game actually works they can definitely be like oh yeah that's Radford and then we can at least talk about that and even at like if I go to let's say a tennis game I don't know a whole lot about tennis but I can definitely like oh like yeah that's Radford and I can definitely talk to someone about that and we can communicate When it comes to learning a new sport, the first thing that has to happen is to watch it. It's impossible to fully learn a sport through reading and research. You have to watch it live. I thought about Raffin University students who aren't familiar with the sport getting help from someone who is in the crowd to understand, thus creating a connection. I feel like it's the same way with at least some of the classes that I'm in. Some of the physics classes, we'll be in class and we'll talk about like different concepts and uh, how to calculate a certain value and stuff like that. Like going to a sporting event would be like kind of doing the homework and then finding that friend would be like someone in your class that you're like, oh, I don't I don't quite get this. And they're like, oh, yeah, let me show you. And then I feel like even though like you're trying to push the sporting events, it's also not just that. But 
it's just another way of pushing that same concept that you're trying to get. Well, there you have it. Whether it be cheering together for the same team that brings you closer together or supporting rival teams and driving you apart, sports can play a major role in building relationships. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank my three guests for taking the time out of their day to discuss and tackle this interesting subject, and I hope that I have brought some new information to you, the listener. Thank you for listening to my podcast today. Have a great day.